Ooh. Yes, it's nearly here. It's nearly time. Usyk versus Joshua 2. My plums are tingling with excitement for this heavyweight bout that has a million unanswered questions. Does Joshua still have the dog in him? Can Usyk take Joshua's power that he was unable to unleash last time out? Or is Usyk just simply a genius? The new king of the division. We are about to find out. But how did we get here? Uncle Proper is about to tickle your pickle and get you all frothy for this fight as we look back on how we got to this point. Strap yourselves in. The tale begins one winter's day in December 2020. We were locked up indoors, wiping our noses from the lurgy, saying to Boris, please let us out our houses, you big floppy-eared fucker. And even though I weren't allowed within two metres of my nan because of social distancing, and had to hand her air freshener through the window to help her get rid of the smell of piss, two men were able to square off in a boxing ring. Joshua and Pulev. AJ's first fight since his revenge on the Mexican Peter Griffin. He showed the world he could be a boxer in the Ruiz fight and he looked to have maintained this new fighting style for the Pulev fight. However, the AJ brutality we all know and love was let out the bag in the ninth round. A knockout win had now left the door wide open for the fight that everyone had been praying for. Two British powerhouses at the top of their game for the undisputed title. One of the biggest fights in the history of the sport. It's Deji versus Anise and Gibb. No, no wait, sorry. No, definitely not. Fuck that. No, I meant Joshua versus Fury. It was on, like Donkey Kong. The teams got down to business. Eddie Hearn was working his magic with the Saudis, and Frank and Bob Aaron moaned their bollocks off about everything that Eddie did. But it was Tyson Fury who knew how to get this fight over the line. He said to himself, right, Frank's not really pulling his weight, and Eddie's taking too long. Who can I call to get all this done? I know, let me give my drug dealer a ring. Yes, fucking great idea. Hello, Dan. Daniel, me old son, have you got a packet and can you sort out a fight for me and Joshua in Saudi? Yeah, you can, mate. Ah, brilliant. Hold on a minute, 100 notes for a bag? Blimey, better be premium, mate. I ain't made of money. All right, laters. Bosh. And then it was all done. I'm just after getting off the phone with Daniel Kinahan. He's just informed me the biggest fight in British boxing history has just been agreed. Get up there, my boy! Prince Khalid of Saudi Arabia told me this fight's a 100% hot, August 14th, 2021, summertime. It's nice now to get everybody moving forward saying, yes, August 14th, it's on. You know, we can move forward now, start planning the press tours, the media tours, and a build-up that will be possibly as good as the fight. Uh, oh, bloody hell. These drug dealers, they're so unreliable, ain't they? As it turned out, an arbitration with Wilder for the trilogy fight was lurking in the background and Wilder won the appeal to fight Fury again under contract. AJ Fury was a goner. We were all devastated. Nobody saw this coming. Frank never saw it coming. Tyson never saw it coming. And Bob Arum never saw it coming either. It was really unfortunate. Yes, that's Bob Arum. The 90-year-old lawyer who attended Harvard Law School, worked as an attorney in the United States Department of Justice and practiced civil law for over 30 years. Never saw it coming. Fuck me, what a stroke of bad luck, Bob. Anyway, the dream fight was out the window. The WBC belt was all tied up and Joshua needed an opponent. One undefeated cruiserweight had been making his way through unknown territory in the heavyweight division. That man was Alexander Usyk. Two relatively unconvincing wins against Witherspoon and Chisora had left many wondering if he was really ready. But this man is a sandwich short of a picnic, and he doesn't give a bollocks. He was desperate for the opportunity, and the WBO ordered it. The fight was on. The 25th of September 2021, Joshua's world title belts on the line, the brutal knockout machine in AJ and the genius technician in Usyk would go to battle. Tottenham Hotspur Stadium, over 65,000 in attendance, the ring walk was incredible with the fireworks and the lights and the fans going wild. Joshua stood on the platform looking around, realising he had earned this. His sacrifices had led to this point, one of the proudest moments in this world champion boxer's phenomenal career. A dream come true. Well done, AJ. But then he got in the ring. Now, you know when you walk into a room and you can't remember why you walked in there? I think this is what happened to Joshua that night. He got in the ring and thought, uh, uh. 
What did I come in here for? Ah, oh, I forgot now. Keys, no. Wallet, no. Uh, uh. Oh yeah, I remember now. <laughs> You was meant to go in there and try and knock him out, you great big flannel. Not dance around against a superior boxer. You don't try out box the boxer, it's rule one in the book. Joshua aimed to prove a point that night to shut up the doubters by outclassing the magician that is Usyk. But he was left behind. Probably didn't help as well Rob McCracken shouting, brilliant AJ every couple of fucking minutes. But anyway, the world titles were once again out of his hands. The narrative in the boxing world had changed from Usyk would not be able to to take AJ's power to AJ. He's not in the same league as this man. If it happens again, everybody said it would be the same old story. Meanwhile, in Nevada, Fury was tidying up some loose ends. October the 9th, Fury Wilder free. Wilder knew from the first and second fight them dodgy bloody Fury spiked his water, cheated with some naughty gloves and made him wear a really heavy costume so his legs were knackered by the time he got to the ring. So this time it was going to be a different story. And by Joe it wasn't, cause Fury knocked fuck out of him. And the saga was all over. Thanks for coming. But now, the boxing world was torn. Should Fury fight Usyk, or should Joshua get another chance? Would Joshua step aside? And did Fury even have the motivation? January 2022, the story emerged. Joshua would be stepping aside for a whopping 15 million to allow for the undisputed. It was shocking news. Had he gone and bottled it? Where did this person get this information from? I'm hearing people saying AJ accepts 15 million to step aside. I ain't signed no contract. I ain't seen no contract. Stop listening to the bullshit until it comes from me. No, of course he hadn't bottled it. Now this story was broken by Mr. Gareth A. Davies. Now I'm not gonna dig Gareth out. I'm sure he's a lovely guy. But more often than not, his sources are as reliable as a handbrake on a fucking canoe. In a nutshell, he does talk a hefty bit of bollocks every so often. But there we are. Anyway, Fury gave up. He claimed Joshua wanted too much money in Step Aside, but Eddie Hearn claimed Fury wanted a warm-up fight before Usyk, which would have delayed everything. Who knows the truth? Instead, Dillian White was finally given his opportunity for a world title against Fury. And he, well, that didn't go very well for him. But anyway, the rematch of epic proportions was bubbling up behind the scenes. A changing camp for Joshua had ensued. It was out with the old and in with the new. And then on June the 19th, 2022, it was finally announced. And here we are. August the 20th, these warriors do battle once more. The rage on the Red Sea. Will the dog in Joshua be unleashed like the old days once again? Or will Usyk show he is even better than we already think he is? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. But one thing is for certain. One thing is for sure. If you want to know who really wins this fight, just go with the opposite of whoever David Hay picks. His predictions are normally fucking superb. Big up the haymaker. Like and subscribe. Much love, Bish. Sorry, Bosh.